Welcome to the Dynon Channel, your video source for information, education, and training on Dynon Avionics' industry-leading line of integrated avionics for experimental amateur-built and light sport aircraft. Today's topic, Skyview System, Autopilot Expert Mode, Heading and Track Modes. In this video, I'm going to address controlling the autopilot in the expert control scheme or menu system, uh, specifically addressing the roll axis, using the roll submenu to control the autopilot modes in the lateral axis. Uh, looking at my screen, currently we're flying along, I'm uh, hand flying the airplane and we're looking at Skyview's main menu. Button 1 says PFD, that tells me I'm at the main menu. My first step is to select the autopilot menu, button 4. Here we are looking at the autopilot menu. Uh, in a previous video I showed you the quickest way to engage the autopilot is to press the AP button, and I'm going to do that now. Pressing button 2. Button 2 and 3 turn on, they're labeled, they're colored green, which tells me the autopilot is engaged. Looking at the status bar tells me the autopilot has engaged in the roll mode on lateral control, meaning it's holding the roll angle I was at when I engaged. On the pitch axis on the right, it's in the VS mode for vertical speed and it's holding vertical speed zero. So now the autopilot's in control and I want to have it fly on course and I need to choose from multiple modes to do that. The first step is to get to the roll control menu. That's labeled but roll here on button four and I'll press that. Now we're looking at the roll menu. Notice here on the right, button 7 says Roll Hold. That matches what we see in the status bar up at the top. We're in the Roll Hold mode. It's abbreviated to just the word Roll in the enunciation. Now, look at buttons 2, 3, and 4. I have three separate control modes for traveling on course. The first two, labeled Heading and Track, are related in that both of those modes are going to follow the heading bug on my directional gyro. You see that bug here at my finger at the blue pointer. It's currently at 270. The digital value for that heading bug is here at about the 7 o'clock position on the DG. So my bug is set to 270 degrees, but the autopilot is disregarding that. It's flying, simply holding my roll angle. And if I want to have the autopilot follow that bug, I need to engage either heading mode or track mode. I'm going to start with the heading mode, but before I do, let me explain in advance what the autopilot is going to do. If I were to press the heading button now, the autopilot would immediately fly and commence a turn to my bug. If you've ever used the autopilot using the simplified menu, that's different than the behavior you see there. In the simplified menu, the autopilot uh, will automatically synchronize the bug to the top of the directional gyro when you engage the autopilot. And that's for simplicity. Normally when uh, a VFR pilot turns the autopilot on, he just wants it to go where he's already pointed the airplane. To avoid the uh, autopilot turning to that bug, before I engage the mode, I'm going to set the bug to the top of the directional gyro myself. Now I'm going to press button 2, HDG, for the heading mode. Notice that the autopilot is now engaged in heading mode. The button is turned green. My status bar at the top says that the, in the lateral axis, we're now in the heading mode, holding a magnetic heading of 310, or excuse me, 311. Now, I don't know if you're looking at my map. I have a little bit of weather ahead of me. So my first next step, I'm going to rotate the bug about 20 degrees to the right to avoid the weather ahead. I've set it on 330 degrees at where my finger is pointing. And notice the autopilot is immediately turning the aircraft to place the magnetic heading on that back value. So the autopilot will carry along, carry on in this mode until I change the heading bug. Next I want to talk about the second option labeled TRK. That's the track mode. It's still going to follow the, he the heading bug we're talking about, but the autopilot controls the aircraft in a slightly different manner. In the heading mode, as I said, the autopilot will maneuver the aircraft to make sure that the magnetic heading is on the bug value, in this case 330 degrees. 
I'm going to turn the airplane a little bit more to the right to establish a little bit more of a crosswind situation here. My finger currently is pointing at the winds aloft indicator at the, to the left of the directional gyro. You can see here I've got a, a wind from 297, 296 degrees at nine knots, and I've got a crosswind component currently of about seven knots. Graphically, I can also see an indication of the crosswind at the top of my directional gyro. It's a little cluttered here. You have to look closely to see, but you can see a digital value is my current magnetic heading. The blue item is the bug pointer, which is nestled almost under my magnetic heading of 340 degrees. And slightly to the right, you see a small magenta triangle. That magenta triangle is a pointer to the magnetic value of my current GPS ground track. And you can see it's slightly offset to the right of my current magnetic heading. That's consistent with the winds aloft pointer here that says, hey, you've got a wind coming from the left. It's blowing you right to, uh, uh, off to the right in relation to your magnetic heading. And that's consistent as we see in the magenta pointer. So the autopilot again is trying to maintain a magnetic heading of 340 degrees. It's doing a pretty good job. I'm now going to switch the autopilot to the track mode, and you're going to see two things happen. One, or actually three things. The, auto, the track mode will become green, telling me that's the mode I'm in. Notice also that the knob down here on the left, currently labeled HDG, which is what I use to control that heading bug, the label for that knob is going to change. It's the same bug, but because the, the reference for the bug is different, it's going to be relabeled to match the autopilot mode. And finally, you'll see the airplane turn a little bit to the right to put the ground track at the top of my directional gyro. So here we go. I'm pressing button three, labeled track. That button turns green. The label for my bug control knob changes to TRK to match the autopilot mode. The upper left-hand corner, the autopilot enunciation sa says I'm now in the TRK mode still with a bug value of 340. But notice what's happening on the jap directional gyro. My med magnetic heading has now become slewed slightly to the left. Instead of a magnetic heading of 340, the autopilot is maneuvering the aircraft to point the nose slightly left to whatever magnetic heading is necessary to make sure that my GPS ground track follows the bug. And at the top of the DG, you see that the magenta triangle now is nestled into the center of the bug, and the magnetic heading is slightly off to the left to compensate for crosswind. That seems like a subtle distinction. Visually, it's not very apparent because the, the crosswind component is relatively small in this demonstration, but the distinction is extremely important for IFR pilots. Uh, for you IFR pilots, I would point out one important control factor, and that is if you are flying with the autopilot and you're following vectors from ATC, I want to stress that a vector assignment from ATC assigns you not a ground track, but a magnetic heading. So if I were giving you an IPC and you were giving a vector of 340 and you select the autopilot into the track mode, it would be my obligation to tell you or to ask you, are you complying with instructions? And I hope that you would say, no, I'm not. I better switch to the heading mode. I'll do that now. So now I've switched the autopilot to the heading mode. And notice, I get a right turn, which is changing to put my aircraft's magnetic heading at 340 in this example. Now I'm finally complying with that ATC instruction. So that's kind of a long-winded explanation, but it covers the first two lateral control modes on the autopilot using the expert menu. The third lab lateral control mode is labeled NAV, and I'm going to co cover that mode in a separate video. For more information on planning or capabilities of the Skyview system, please see our website at dynonavionics.com, where you can find links to our system installation guides pilot user guides, and other valuable information like our user form. Thank you for watching the Dynon channel.